Yes, that's right. It's Joe here for Joyrider TV live from the Wildwind Boat Park once again for the last live Q&A in the month of August this year. Now that's exciting, I think you'll find. Uh, as ever, we've got Ricky Nielsen. How's Hello. it been, Rick? I've got a question. Uh, who's going to get the fastest time on the September speed stick? Who knows, eh? Oh my <laughs> goodness. Now that that is a question with September just days away. One of the main events here at Wild Wind of the whole season is, of course, the September speed stick, which was actually the forerunner of the global speed stick. We started doing it in September only here at Wild Wind to give everyone a bit of focus. Hi, Leon. Well done. Hi, James. Nice to have you with us as always. Yeah, so, um, yeah, we started doing the September speed stick. Hi, Matthew. Um, as a bit of a focus driver for September. Hi, Jose. Nice to have you here. Hi, Kush. And all the players are assembling. Uh, nice that you could all make it. Um, we've got s some pretty decent conditions here. Hi, back there, Your job is better than mine. It's all just relative, I'm sure. Hi, BFX. Need help, please ask if anyone has a mast comp tip. Is that, and would that be to get the mast, hi Rodrigo, um, to get the mast to, um, is it somewhere near Singapore, that kind of, oh man, boat got trashed with Typhoon for a getaway. Does anybody have a comp tip mast that will work on a getaway? What country is it again, Jose? Um, it's not Australia. I'm thinking it might be Singapore, but I could be wrong. Macau. So if anybody, China, if anybody can get, there's a lot of ships that go to China. So I think we should be able to get one there. Who has got a mast that can help Jose out there close to Hong Kong? Thanks for that. Um, that's a very good early question. If anybody else needs any boat parts, then this is a good time to uh, chat with your fellow catamaran sailors to find out if anybody is getting rid of any boat parts that you perhaps need. But um, so as always, just gonna be here for one hour. Um, so the last questions will be at quarter past six my time, which is in 45 minutes. James has another hurricane. Oh my goodness. Is it actually the windy season? Is it that time of year? Robin, hi. Good morning. Oh my goodness, you're ahead of the game. Or maybe a bit behind. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, it has been pretty juicy here today in Vasiliki. Hi, Cedric. Uh, probably about 20 knots, maybe a bit more. It'll probably get up a bit more later. Oh, Hurricane Laura. Ah, oh yeah, that's the one that's been hit in the UK as well. I've heard of some really good uh, windsurfing conditions in the UK of late. Hi, Brian. Nice to have you on board. Welcome to the Q&A from the Wild Wind Boat Park. I'm currently sat on the tornado known as the school bus. So this tornado is called the school bus because this is the one for general use. And then next door is, of course, Bad Boy 94, which is for specific purposes. Um, had an absolute bad boy of a session on Bad Boy 94 on Friday afternoon last week. All afternoon on Bad Boy 94, and she was ripping. Yes, going very nicely indeed. I actually got the real sales out for the first time since the Europeans last year. How was the experience towing whilst steering whilst towing the wakeboard? Well, because the um, wakeboard was foiling, as soon as he got foiling, there was almost, you could, it felt like he'd fallen off. Like there was almost no load um, that was noticeable uh, from the back of the boat. So 
uh, getting him out of the water. Now that was a different story. Uh, the boat just didn't want to go, but then Charlie, our um, stunt man, he was pumping the board a lot just to use the tension in the rope to get foiling. And then once he was foiling, we were off. Uh, it possibly wasn't quite windy enough. Actually, yes, it, I think we said it was windy enough for conventional wakeboarding, but uh, that was a lot of fun. And I think the next time we will try the conventional wakeboard uh, rather than the foiling option, because I think with the conventional wakeboard, we could actually take a look at how fast can you sail whilst towing a conventional wakeboard. Hey, Pano, waiting for you in Petra. Bring a 16 with you. Oh yeah. Is that, um, that would be wakeboarding on the dagger board, like in sharing the wind. Florida, a little bit behind. Okay, nice one. Hi, Steve-O. What's the reason you don't have kites on your 16s? This is a leading question, by the way. And um, yeah, all right, we're, we're now into the scrolling back time of stage of the game. So the reason that um, we don't have kites on the 16s is because we're sailing every day in an absolute bucket load of wind. Um, I don't feel that having the kite on the 16 is necessary. If we were more of a place which is focused on doing sailaways every day, like when I went to Mauritius, they're focused on doing a lot of sailaways where they take the boats and they'll go and sail to another beach every day. Um, so for that sort of sailing, the spinnaker on the 16 has a bit more of a purpose. But for us, who are largely kind of going out, beam reaching, giving it some serious uh, beans uh, here, the spinnaker's not really necessary. Um, so my Hobie 16 kite I have is no good for you. No, thank you very much for the offer, but um, we wouldn't use it, not here. Uh, the guys in Mauritius might be interested. You could perhaps get a bit of money off a holiday to Mauritius. That would be um, well worthwhile. Yeah, so there we go. That's why we're not using the spinnakers on the 16, because, and also having the bowsprit on the boat as well, when it's windy, it's more windage, that's gonna slow you down. Uh, there's more stuff there that you could hit when you send your crew flying through the rigging on an exciting pitch pole. There we are, scrolling back. Okay, Cedric says, how do you make the mainsail pop after tacking in light winds? My Viper F16 mainsail does not pop after tacking. Um, it might be that you have too much tension in your battens. It could be that your top two or three battens are a little bit too soft. If the battens are too soft, then you can actually get too much curve in the battens, which makes it very difficult for those battens to pop. The way to check if you've got a soft batten or a stiff batten is, um, we're gonna to have to visualize here. So we take a stick, uh, we take the baton, sorry, and we put it vertically on a set of bathroom scales. Good so far, or perhaps kitchen scales if you've got the digital ones. And then you push down on the end of the baton until it bends. That is the number that says how stiff the baton is. So of course, the higher number means it's stiffer, the lower number means it's softer. So a baton that's too soft is likely to have too much curve in it, um, which can mean that it's really difficult to get that baton to pop after a, um, a tack or perhaps even a jibe. Or it could just be that you've tensioned the baton too much. That's the best I have for you at this time. But what you can do to help your battens to pop after attack on an F16, F18 style boat is just as you're coming out of attack, get the crew to really crank on the downhaul. That'll flatten the sail off and then batten should go. There we are. I think that was a pretty good answer. 
scrolling back. Okay, we got Russell there. Um, there's a catamaran event coming up, East Coast USA, Virginia Beach, Virginia. Uh, search on Facebook for Ver Version Race 2020 for more details. Fantastic. Um, perhaps if you send me a link, I'll um, link it to the Total Joyrider Facebook page as well. Unless you can share it directly to there. Um, I don't know what the permissions are and what have you. But either way, we'll get that event linked, shared on the Total Joyrider Facebook page. Nice one. Sounds interesting. All right, scrolling back. Okay, that's in two weeks, Labor Day weekend. All right, James, uh, I enjoy your show. Keep up the good work and be careful. God bless you. God bless you too, James. Thanks and nice to have you on board and always nice to meet more members of the global community. Here's Panos. Is it true that if you learn sailing the 16, you can sail almost any catamaran? This is a fine question from my Hellenic friend uh, down in Patra. Um, it is pretty much true. Uh, sorry about the shaky camera, by the way. Uh, I haven't got any sort of tripod support today. Um, yeah, if you can, the Hobie 16, will really sort out your technique because on a Hobie 16, you can't get away with bad technique. You have to use good technique to sail the Hobie 16. And thus, if you go on to another type of boat, all of the fundamentals, the tacking, the jibing, um, getting going after you've stalled, that kind of thing, uh, perhaps crew weight distribution should be good if you're moving on to another boat from the 16. There are, of course, specifics with the other boats which are specific to those boats, like you might be moving on to a, an F-18 where you've got to worry about the dagger boards, downhaul, mast rotation, uh, spinnaker, self-tacking jib, all that kind of thing. But that's all details. The fundamentals remain the same. And yes, the 16 will give you strong fundamentals. Great question. The only boat that will still be a massive challenge after the 16 is, of course, the 14. Okay. Okay, Jose asks, nutrition and hydration fluids. Any tip you could share? How long is it safe to sail without reaching exhaustion in Greece? Um, yeah, I... I drink a lot, personally, I drink a lot of water throughout the day. Uh, but if I'm sailing in the afternoon, I might be out for three hours, three and a half hours, in which time I might not have a drink, but I'll have a drink immediately afterwards. And that all seems to be fine. Um, what I do use is um, there's some electrolyte tablets that you can put in water, which are used by cyclists. And that means that if you're drinking a large amount of water, you're not reducing the, what is it like, essential salts and things in your body by kind of flushing out all of that stuff with too much water. So well worth looking into um, electrolyte tablets for cyclists um, and you can just get, a, they're kind of like Barocca, um, but they're not, there we go. But that is, <clears throat> um, here we go. James asks, have you ever thought of putting any Hobie Cat style wings on any of your catamarans and trapezing off the wings uh, back in the day? We've had, th since I've been here, we've had three winged boats. The first one was an 18 Magnum. And yes, we did trapeze off those wings. And yes, we absolutely love that. Um, does take up a bit more space having the wings um, it's also a bit heavier and it is um, it's heavier more windage um, bigger so it takes up more space 
and if you capsize, it's definitely more weight to bring back upright. But trapezing off the wings is fantastic. What a great idea that is. Um, we also had a Hobie 17, which of course has the wings, uh, which are essential on a 17 if you're going to sail it in any breeze because the boat's so overpowered. And then we had a Hobie 21 Sport Cruiser, which was more like a caravan with a sail, but really, really great fun and a nice touring boat for going to other beaches and that kind of thing. But with the boats we've got here, we've got no plans to put any wings on them at this time. But um, I think there is, for long distance sailing, I think the wings are a great idea because it gives you a lot more dry, sort of semi drier storage possibilities for gear and stuff. Um, and it means you can sail the boat in a stronger wind without having to trapeze, which might be better for your energy levels. There we are. All right, scrolling back. All right, Jose says, uh, ideas for DIY harnesses for, let's say a rather large guy using a usual safety harness. Um, no ideas as such, but what we've done in the past here is using a windsurfing seat harness as a trapeze harness. All you have to do is change the spreader bar so you've got the different hook on there. But um, perhaps getting hold of, um, let's say, the larger size windsurfing seat harnesses might be easier to get hold of than a trapeze harness in that size. It would certainly be cheaper as well. You could probably, there'd be a lot on eBay because about 15 years ago in windsurfing, seat harnesses became slightly less fashionable, except with the speed sailors and slalom sailors. Um, so in theory, there should be a reasonable amount of seat harnesses about out there. That would be my suggestion. And uh, that suggestion goes to everybody, no matter what size you are. If you're not sailing a long distance upwind, certainly if you've got no back problems, if you've got any back problems. Hey, Johnny, nice to have you on board. Johnny was here just, what, two weeks ago. Um, if you've got any back problems, you should be using a good, very supportive uh, trapeze harness. But if you've got a good back and um, you're not sailing a long distance upwind especially, the windsurfing seat harness is a viable option. Scrolling back. Germans fan, hello guys, hello Germans fan, nice to have you on board as always. And hello Sean, how late in the year does Wildwind stay open for customers? Good question. Uh, this year we're closing on the 4th of October. Um, so there we are. The 4th of October is when we're closing this year, but it's generally the first weekend in October that we close. Oh, have we got a question from Pirate Sam? Okay, flipping it round. We've got a rather wet looking Pirate Sam just Hello. coming in. Hello, back for a specific boat problem. Uh, yeah, so we've just been sailing with uh, a guest for the last sail of the day. It's very windy and we just did two of the most humongous pitch poles known to man and Toby Five now has a split gunner. Um, so, <laughs> apologies, but there we are. Ouch. Okay, uh, I think that might mean the, uh, thank you very much for that, Sam. Nice uh, to get some pitch poles in on a Wednesday afternoon. Clears the head. Um, yeah, that's, that's the sort of calibre we expect from our sailing instructors here on the beach, if anybody is thinking of working here in the future. Um, two massive pitch poles uh, and still smiling. But um, that might mark the return of Hobie 16 number three, uh, which has been out this season uh, because it's waiting for a front cross beam. But um, there we are. Okay, sorry, uh, scrolling back. Okay, TTV Scopes, hi, nice to have you on board. Kuro 5150. But that's, I'm sure that must be uh, a PV sort of Eddie Van Halen reference. 
Um, anyway, have eyes on secondhand NACRA Inter 18, quite an old F18. It does not have a self-tacking jib, but I never sailed with a self-tacking jib myself. Does it make a diff big difference to have it? I tell you what, if it's a good price, like a very good price, I would think this is just really throwing it out there for an Inter 18. The Inter 18 was the first F18 from NACRA that first came out in 95, 96. And then I think it was probably replaced by whatever they called their next one, um, which might have been, I can't even, I can't even remember what it was, but um, would have been replaced about five years later. So it will be good tw getting on for 20 years old at least. So I would say if it's 1,500, maybe 2,000 units of currency or less, then it's, and it's in good shape, then I'd say it's probably a good deal. The self-tacking jib really comes into its own on the race course. Uh, because it's especially like when you're using the spinnaker on the downwind leg, when you're jibing, because I used to race the Tiger back in those days before the self-tacking jib was on all the boats. And um, jibing without the self-tacking jib is a bit more of a faff with the spinnaker up if it's windy. But other than that, there's no real problem. Well, there's not a problem not having a self-tacking jib. It's just if you're on the race course, you will lose out a little bit to the boats that do have it because it is like the hands-free kit for the catamaran crew on the move. Um, but yeah, uh, good choice. All right, Germans fan. Today in Germany, we had 30 knots of wind some great champagne sailing and I should think some big speeds as well. Um, this hurricane that is sweeping the planet, surely we should be seeing some big speeds coming in on the speed stick. TTV scopes. I sail with my granddad. That is very nice. Um, yeah, it's nice to sail with a family member. Um, good for granddad to be I would assume granddad is passing on the knowledge or um, perhaps you're passing on the knowledge to granddad. Who can say? Um, Jeffrey Nichols. Good morning, Joe from Hale, Michigan. Nice to have you on board there, Jeffrey. Okay, TTV scopes. We're getting little bite-sized chunks from TTV sales of Dart 15. Nice choice. The Dart 15 is a lot of fun. And we've got Wyatt here. Opinions on laser sailing versus Hobie sailing. Which is a better buy for around $16? Um, well, now this is going to come as a bit of a blow. But it's unlikely that you'll find a laser or a Hobie 16 for $16. I would say it's an interesting question, actually. Let's talk how much. Um, a used laser, the cheapest you'd get a seaworthy used laser for is probably something like 700, maybe something like that. And for a Hobie 16, for one which you'd actually feel comfortable going to sea on, perhaps you just have to replace the rigging, maybe about 1,200 units of currency. Um, and then, yeah, so that would be kind of like the lowest price. You do hear of people getting given boats, which of course is the golden ticket that we're all after. But um, yeah, 700 for a laser, 1200 for a Hobie 16, maybe a thousand. Um, and then the, diff the difference, laser, definitely single-handed. Hobie 16, you can sell with one or two. Uh, laser, you can put it on the roof of your car, take it to wherever you're going to sail, chuck it off the roof, chuck it in the sea, very, very quick to put together and to get out there. Hobie 16, you'll need to have it on a trailer. It's going to take about four times the time 
to get it on the sea. What else? Hobie 16, quite a lot heavier because there's a lot more boat there. Um, but then the big difference is, of course, Hobie 16, it's a catamaran, uh, better for fishing, uh, better for sailing fast, um, better for taking out birds that you meet in a nightclub the night before. You can't do that with a laser and the list goes on. So I hope that has touched the surface of that question there. Can't even remember who asked the question there. That was a big, big answer. Oh, that was Wyatt. Okay, now we've got Trax Z. Um, I bought my first 29er last weekend. Congratulations. Um, 29er, an excellent boat, very high performance. Um, single trapeze skiff type boat for lighter teams i think you should have a lot of fun with that okay scrolling back we're scrolling back okay germans fan asks is there a big performance difference between a normal jib and a rolling jib on the hobie 16 to be honest, I haven't sailed a rolling jib for a long time. We did have them here um, up until I think it was 97 that we stopped using rolling jibs on the 16s here. But since then, we've been fully batting jibs all the way. But I would say if you did a direct comparison around the race course, the batten jib would take the rolling jib on every leg. Probably about a 2% difference in performance around the race course. Um, and then uh, also with the rolling jib, you're more likely to get the problems with flappy leech. But what you're gaining in convenience is massive. To be able to roll your jib, now that is convenient. All right, scrolling back. If anybody at Wild Wind happens to be watching this, um, Amstel, yeah, would be would be very good. Um, it's that sort of time. All right, we've got KK. What country is this harbour? Yeah, this is Greece, uh, and we're on the island of Lefkus, and the town is called Vasiliki. It's very famous for windsurfing, possibly one of the most famous windsurfing places in Europe where we happen to have a load of boats. Let's have, let's do a quick panorama. There we go, and we're back in the now. Good question. I like, I like the equa occasional question, which is quite short to answer. Um, all right, let's just pause for a second. Could everybody please hit the like button? Because um, that's good. At the moment, we're on seven. There's ten. Come on, keep it going. We'll get on with it when we hit, I don't know, 17. That's 12. 17, there we go. Wow. Thank you very much. All right, it just, it just helps for people later on uh, to find this video uh, because you can re-watch these Q&A videos afterwards. It's usually... I think it's usually about half a day later after this video goes out, it's available to watch on YouTube and you can see the comments in real time as they came along. So you won't see any comments right at the start, but as you go through, you'll see the comments popping up as if you were here live. That's exciting. All right, scrolling back. Yeah, still no Amstel. Um, delivery service but um that shout out only just went out okay just scrolling back all right jason clark asks what is the best boat you have ever sailed Woo. Hmm. i tell you what bad boy 94 is definitely up there um but in the 2012 Tornado World Championships, I borrowed a Tornado from the world champions who are also Olympic silver medalists. And it was a Graham Eels Tornado, 
built in the UK and that boat was an absolute flying machine. It was the first tornado event that I'd done and we finished in 10th place, which we were very happy with and we went very, very fast. <clears throat> but Bad Boy 94 is certainly a hot rod. I'm just trying to think if I've, I haven't really, to be honest, I've always been here, so I haven't really sailed anything juicier than what you see in the videos that comes out here. Um, yeah, that's about the size of it. Good question though. I'll let you know if I sell anything juicier in the future. Okay. Right, Luke asks, laser mast step broke mid-season. Oh my goodness. Should I attempt, oh, should I attempt to repair without extensive fiberglass repair experience? None of the boat yards near me want to take the boat on. Oh my goodness, that is a massive question. And um, I tell you where you should take that question is on the laser forums, because that is a massive, I would say that's a massive job. And without a lot of fiberglass repair, experience you could end up ruining your boat um, badly we've had it in the past where we've had um, ex excess fiberglass in the bottom of the mast step for a laser which has really affected the boat um, so I should get on the laser forums and get some questions out there and see what people say uh, sorry, I can't help you on that one, but that is juicy. All right, scrolling back. All right, not our gang. I'm now two centimeters longer after heaving. Oh, yes. All right, so yeah, not our gang there. He had quite a grueling experience with his Dart 18 where um what happened he went for a jibe kind of missed the boat a bit while he was crossing it managed to grab hold of the trapeze line and um went flying off the back of the boat just holding on to the trapeze line by the handle and just getting dragged off and eventually he had to let go and the boat sailed off into the distance um mr ausgang asked before um, in a previous encounter, what would have been the better thing to do? And my response was to always have a hand on the main sheet. So when you're jibing, when you're crossing the boat, pick up the main sheet in the middle of the boat uh, when you're crossing. And then if you do fall off the boat, by being in the water holding the main sheet, the main sheet will automatically sheet in, which in lighter winds, will mean that the boat will head up into the wind and stop. And then in heavier winds, it means the boat will capsize. And then you can drag yourself back in using the main sheet there as a recovery line. Main sheet. All right, scrolling back. How are we doing for time? All right, we're doing, we're doing okay for time. We've still got... 12 minutes to get your questions in and then there won't be any more questions after that because I do have to put a time limit on these things all right chet says you just mentioned moving on to the 14 would that be the next massive challenge the hobie 14 is a very challenging boat uh, it's for low volume hulls which make it more difficult to sail the power to weight ratio is massive and the power to volume ratio is also massive. It's very easy to stall, but if you've got some patience and um, a bit of time on your hands, it really does reward that patience because it is so much fun to sail the Hobie 14, but it will frustrate the hell of you. The hell of you? It will frustrate the hell out of you on your way 
to get into the good stuff because it is very easy to stall, very easy to capsize, and it can be quite difficult to get going again. But I did some troubleshooting videos on the Hobie 14. Uh, do check those bad boys out. You'll see them in the, um, if you just go into the videos. Worrying moment where somebody is carrying a rudder out of the water without a boat attached. Hmm. Okay, yeah, so um, that is a brief overview on the 14, but it's so much fun. And you could pick 14s up, I think. Um, if you have a really good look around, you can pick them up for not too much money. All right, 5150, send you some photos to show us your cat when he pulls the trigger. Nice one, look forward to seeing that. Okay, then we've got Alfro Canmore. Replacing sales, Hobie Originals or Aftermarket. Okay, um, if it's for a 16 or a 14, personally, I would always go for the original Hobie sales because there is something very special and um, almost something historical about having original Hobie sales on your 14 or 16. Um, it's the colors, it's the weight of the cloth is very specific. And of course the sail maker could um, take a, an original sail, deconstruct it, copy the panels, put it together, and then you should have a very, very accurate copy. Um, but for me, originals. We've just, um, we've just pulled the trigger ourselves on um, some X competition sales for our 16s for next year. This is actually news just in, very exciting. These are gonna be from the 2015 Europeans, only used for one week, and they are significantly cheaper than buying just new sales off the peg. Uh, well worth looking into X competition sales. Very nice. But um, yeah, I'd go for originals there. All right, scrolling back. Isaac asks, what F18 models do you have at Wild Wind Down? What have you sailed? Yeah, the only F18 models that I've sailed happen to be the ones that we have at Wild Wind, which are, of course, we've got the Hobie Tiger, one of the original F18s. Uh, we had the Hobie Wildcat, which was excellent but um, really good boat, but the Wildcat with, it was a bit too fragile for us. I'm gonna cut to the chase, bit too fragile for us. So we, um, we sent that one away. Well, we sold it, okay. And now currently we've got, we've still got Tigers. We've actually got five Tigers in the quiver but we've only unpacked three of them for this year because we are operating under a reduced capacity. And we have, of course, got the C2 from Goodall Design, which is nothing short of a rude boy. Flipping the camera around to see Ricky Nielsen. I've got a question. Anyone out there know any other brands other than these glide free laser foils? Uh, uh, that you can use with the lasers. We were just wondering, is Glide Free the only ones that do this? Good question, eh? That's a good question. Don't know. It's a good question. What other companies would be crazy enough to take on Glide Free? Um, there we go. So that was the F. Um, yeah, the C2 is definitely amazing. Very nice indeed. All right. Uh, scrolling back, scrolling back, uh, scrolling back. Okay, we've got Zergorth, 33. Hey, bro, what's your season down now? I want to work with you homies. <laughs> Carrie Keir said working with you. Oh, okay. Um, is that Keir? Um, you must be in the Bahamas. And yes, working at Wild Wind is a trip bro um yeah our season is from may until the start of october 
best, if anybody is looking to work here in the future, best thing to do is to get in touch with me at the start of January, because I am responsible for all of the recruitment here at Wildwind. And um, we're fingers crossed for a proper season next year. And um, if that's the case, we'll be looking at having something in the vicinity of 24 instructors for peak season uh, and more like 17 for the ends of the season. But it is a very good place to work if you really, really, really like sailing boats. That is the main thing. Because uh, it's hard work, but the hard work is paid off by living in a ridiculously nice place like this and sailing really nice boats in really nice conditions and drinking very cold beer after all of that. Good, that's a good question. Yeah, I hope to hear from you. Um, you can find my email address in uh, uh, any of the videos. Also, where can I source some fiberglass end pl plates for my cross beams? I'm in Canada. You are clearly not in the Bahamas. Okay. Yeah, I would. Hmm. Yeah, tricky one. I'd look at getting some, because if you find some original ones, unless you're lucky enough to find someone who's just happens, nobody has spare ones. So I would have a look at making some custom ones out of some fiberglass or plastic or something and seeing what you can do with that. Because to buy the original ones from Hobie Cat, it's gonna be pretty expensive, I would guess. They're gonna be trying to shake you down for at least a hundred um, uh, dollars or something per end cap. Whereas if you know someone who's fairly handy with a bit of fiberglass, then perhaps you could make something, uh, maybe some juicy carbon fiber ones, that'd be nice. All right, Cormac asks, did an inland race on my C2 with dad and split the hull with the dagger board. Ooh, ouch. Oh, I'm very sorry to hear that. God, that must have brought a tear to your eye. But um, was that from hitting the bottom or was it from too much dagger board sailing on a reaching leg uh, with a load of power? I would guess it was from hitting the bottom because those dagger boards on the C2 strike me as being super strong and it is the hull that is gonna take the beating if you hit the bottom. Ouch. All right, what is the best way to slow down a Hobie Tiger from Swebulo? Swebulo, Swebulo? Um, yeah, best way to slow one down, same as anything, is turn it head to wind. But this question has many answers. If you're going upwind, you could turn a bit more into the wind, sheet out the mainsail a bit, more downhaul, ease the jib, um, drag your leg in the water, um, things like that. On a reach, best way to slow down is you could, from a beam reach, you could turn into the wind to slow the boat down, um, but you could also sheet out the mainsail. This, this question is too big to answer, I think. On the downwind, if you get too much, when, you talk, when most people are talking about slowing down, they're talking about handling power rather than specifically slowing down. But on a downwind leg, if you've got too much power, best way to control it is turn more downwind. Uh, the places with least power are directly into the wind and directly downwind. There you go. All right, um, we are, we've got 40 seconds left, uh, in which time we can still accept more questions so get them in now um and that will be it for today for the questions i'll answer all the questions that i've already got but no questions that came in after quarter past why do wildcats pitch pole so much now the, the thing is when we had a wildcat here i didn't feel that it pitch pulled a lot um in fact, 
I don't know if I ever pitch polled that. Oh yeah, I did pitch poll it once. It's a good one. But um, I'd say they don't pitch poll any more than any other F-18s. More likely is it's the people sailing them are perhaps not playing by the rules of let's not pitch pole and perhaps they haven't got the weight far enough back um maybe on the downwind leg oversheating the spinnaker that oversheating the spinnaker unbalances the boat if it's windy which an unbalanced boat is much more likely to pitch pole so um yeah i wouldn't put it down to the design of the boat all right scrolling back all right scroll i'm still scrolling back okay we've got elias is a nacra into 18 for 1400 euros good i tell you what if it's in if it's in a saleable state um that sounds pretty good if it's got everything that it needs if it's got the sails definitely if it's got if it's got a big wheel launching trolley then yes if it's got a trailer as well then yes yes um i'd say that is a good price um if it's in reasonably good condition all right scrolling back okay have okay we've got randy hey have you heard of the dinghy shop to be honest up until about 12 seconds ago i hadn't heard of the dinghy shop um but I have to say I'm reasonably intrigued i'm gonna check it out not right now of course i'm in the middle of something but um okay we've got cad cam awesome q a and channel thank you I've been learning to sail on an old sunfish over the summer and love it. Going to have a laser or cat, maybe both next summer. Hello from New Hampshire, USA. Hello, New Hampshire. Yeah, great idea. Um, yeah, I would only get the laser and the Hobie if you're going to be using them in different situations. If um, they're both for the same situation, then I would say choose one and focus on one rather than having to decide on what boat you're going to sail. So if you're going to be sailing two up, go for the Hobie. If you're going to be sailing single-handed and you need a bit of convenience, go for the laser. There we go. Is CAD CAM asks, is there a place like Wildwind in the USA? Uh, to be honest, I don't know. I, I couldn't answer that. I would guess that there must be places like this in the US that offer a wide range of uh, boats to sail and what have you, but um, I don't know of any specifics. Okay, Elias asks, what are the pros of a NACRA Inter 18? Well, it's um, very similar to the Hobie Tiger. Um, the, I think one of the big design feature differences of the NACRA um, Inter 18 was the front beam was a bit further forwards, which gave you a slightly longer trampoline, a bit more of a working space, which is nice. Um, but the main benefit of the Inter 18 these days is that yes, it is an F18, which means you're getting all of those F18 benefits of having dagger boards having a spinnaker it being very quick upwind and downwind and then but within the f18 class the main benefits of the inter 18 sorry to say is that you'll pick one up for less money and maybe if the inter you know i think considering there's inter 18s for sale that are in saleable condition that is testament to the build quality and it does say that that boat is likely to last you a good while.
Okay, scrolling back here. All right, we've got Nico. What is better for racing, Hobie Tiger or Prindle 19? Hobie Tiger. Because the Hobie Tiger is still part of the F18 class. The Prindle 19, I would guess, maybe in America, but I really couldn't say for sure, but I would guess the Prindle 19, any racing, you'll be racing on handicap and not against other similar boats. There are a tremendous amount of Tigers out there and um, it's um, a much more modern design. I think the Prindle 19 must have come out somewhere early 80s maybe, whereas the Hobie Tiger was out in 96. Uh, the Hobie Tiger's lighter. Um, it's obviously a much more modern design. And the, another big consideration is that there'll be many more Hobie Tigers out there uh, to have a look at, to choose from if you're buying something. Tiger, every time for me. The Prindle 19's a pretty weighty ship. Uh, Rafa asks, have you ever tried a Nacra? Now, to be honest, I've only ever sailed one Nacra and that was a Nacra 6.0, which um, I still remember the marketing slogan. It was called, it said, six shooter, but only for the big guns. And that thing was a bad boy. Um, but I haven't sailed any other Nacras, but the um, Nacras, obviously uh, a massive brand in catamarans and they are leading the way as a brand in racing catamarans um, of the type that we're talking about here. So um, yeah, I'd be very keen to uh, extend my NACRA experience. All right, scrolling back. Oh, we've still got a way to go. All right. Luca says, what do you think of the Hobie T2s and Twixies? I've got the two club in France. Um, yeah, I think anything that gets people out on the water is good. To be honest, I've never sailed either of those types of boat. We did have a, in fact, I don't think we ever got the Twixie here. Somehow we had the sails from a Twixie, but never had one. Um, but these plastic roto molded boats are very good because they are zero maintenance. They'll last forever. And um, they're generally designed to be very user friendly. So um, yeah, great choices. If top performance isn't your key goal there. Of course, if you want a more performance boat, then you have to get something built out of fiberglass, which is going to be a lot lighter and a lot stiffer. Okay. German's fan. I learned cat sailing on a Hobie 16. And today I've tried a NACRA 5.5 with new sails. It really is a weapon. Like the way you're talking there, German's fan. Gino, ciao from Italy. Nice to have you with us. Cormac, did they discontinue the Dart 18? No, it's not discontinued. It's just, I've, I'm i not sure if this is still correct, but I'm pretty sure Dart 18s are just being built in um, South Africa these days. I think that is the case. They used to be built in the UK, but now I think it's just in South Africa. But I could be wrong because I haven't looked it up. Oh, there we go. Jason says Windsport. Windsport happens to be the place that I worked for before I worked at Wild Wind. Um, excellent place if you're looking to do some sailing in the UK down in Cornwall. Really nice spot. Great sailing. So much experience. So much experience, in fact, that Brian and his son Tom, they wrote the book called The Catamaran Book. Worth a look that book. Okay, Scoop, 
Nice to have you with a scoop. The pylon in my Hobie 16 is sinking into the hull and the tops are soft. How dangerous is this? I tell you what, I wouldn't want to go to sea with that. I think it sounds pretty bad. Um, yeah, I, I think it might be time to look for a new hull or a new pair of hulls because that is going to be a juicy repair which we were talking about something similar last week and from this sort of soft deck repair it adds so much weight to your boat that if you have if you can even consider having a budget for it then see if you can find some new hulls sorry okay Jeffrey says we got our Hobie 14 for 500 completely water ready 14 is good value Hunter at what point would you recommend replacing a hull with soft spot as opposed to trying to re-fiberglass I think you just have to consider um, what percentage of that face of the hull is soft so if it's the deck if it's like the whole deck of a Hobie 16 is soft, then replace. If it was half, then um, then it'd probably be worth taking a look inside. But um, if the softness is on the outside of a Hobie, of a hull, then that's much more difficult to get the strength in there because the outside of the hull is taking so much force all the time. So it's going to require more reinforcement to get that stiffness in there. So, um, yeah, sorry. I'm just going through these last questions a little bit more quickly because um, I'm up against the clock, I'm afraid. OT. Hello, how are you doing? I'm doing just fine. Uh, my am still didn't arrive, so could have been doing better, but we're doing all right. Okay, we're still on the, the Inter 18. This is the most I've ever talked about a NACRA Inter 18. Never even sailed one. I've sailed against them. And yes, it is a good boat. It is a good boat. However, I would say choice between an Inter 18 and a Tiger of the same age, I would go with the Tiger. But I've always been a massive Hobie fan. Uh, so there we go. TTV sails a Dart 15 and a Spitfire. Good one. Then we've got Sky Knox. Hello, good to have you on board. All right. OT, love your videos. I'm 16 and would like to have a license to become a part time OB 16 instructor. Can I get some tips on the important parts, teachers' rates? teachers rate on students all right what I think you're asking there is um, what is necessary to become an instructor you just need to really 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 love the sport that is the main thing um, you need to love the sport and be willing to be working all day every day for very little money in exchange for doing the sport that you love. That is the most fundamental thing. If working for not very much money where it feels sometimes like you're doing some very hard work and um, you're not getting paid very much, that is one of the fundamental things about being a sailing instructor. Then the actual sailing skills that um, you looking for to become a sailing instructor if you're talking specifically catamarans I would say if you can um, you know aside from the teaching which you would you'd learn to do the teaching on an instructor training course but the actual sailing if you can sail let's we are always talk about the Hobie 16 and we're not going to change that here if you can sail a Hobie 16 around a race course 
in double trapezing conditions using the double trapeze and not capsizing, then I would say, then you have got the skills to um, be a sailing instructor. Because as soon as you start teaching, your skills just go through the roof as well. All right, gonna have to wrap this up soon. Oh my goodness, there's still a lot more. What's better, a Dart 15 or a Spitfire? Um, you can't just say better, they're very different animals. Uh, the Spitfire, of course, has got spinnaker, dagger boards, and it's got a, a load more power, whereas the Dart 15 is a very simple boat. Uh, Spitfire, I would say, if I had to choose, um, I'd probably go Dart 15, because we haven't got anything like that here on the beach, whereas Spitfire, would be quite closely related to the Hobi Tiger, even though it's smaller, um, but it has a very similar feel. Uh, Sean says, is there any ever nighttime sailing there? No, unfortunately the regulations don't allow it. How freely should the mast rotate on a Hobi 16? It's not moving quite freely. Then we had to take the mast down, that seems to not rotate as freely. Yeah, um, yeah, I think somebody said, um, yeah, do check your mast pivot bearing. There should be a Teflon chip, uh, which is like a white disc, but you can use any sort of plastic disc in the bottom of the mast step uh, to, and that is what the mast rotates on. If you've just got metal against metal, that's not going to rotate very nicely at all. Um, okay, sorry, I've just got to really fire through these last ones. Um, any video on how to correctly sheet the jib on a Hobie 16? Yes, I did do one on that. Um, off the top of my head, I can't remember what I called it, but I did, did do one quite recently called it was one in the mini guides series called um, Traveller Settings. It's from about four weeks ago. Um, so that'll be a good start. Nico, thanks man. Loving your work too. Martin says, thanks for, thank you for the advice. Asking the closest sailing club to me for the type of sailboat because I'm now going to train first at Optimist and then after a 420. All right, brilliant stuff. Dominique. Hi, Joe. Been at Wildwind several times. Nice. It was a great time. But I wonder, is Simon Morgan still around there? He's not around all the time, but he is still the managing director, head honcho, and chief of Wildwind Sailing Holidays the empire um i just seem to do a lot of stuff on the beach uh which seems to be my role now um all right yeah i'm having to fire through i'm going a bit over lucas says we just bought a nacra f18 with self-tacking jib can you tell us how to rig it um i would compare it to the hobie tiger the hobie fx1 um it'll be It'll be some sort of combination of, if you go Tiger, FX1 and Tornado, then the NACRA F18 will fit somewhere amongst that trilogy of reasonably similar boats. Uh, there's already videos on the preparation of those boats. Check those bad boys out. Okay, yeah, I can't, I can't be taking any more questions now because I have to go. All right. Phil, this is the account of one shoe Phil. We'll be coming on. Oh, and he's in one shoe. Ah, nice one, Phil. One, that is the hot news this week. One shoe Phil is here in Vasiliki. And hopefully tomorrow we can get out for a sail and send it across Vasiliki Bay on a 16. Got, can I announce this? Got a brand new camera still in the packet. Gonna unwrap it tomorrow morning.
and uh, the on the head, possibly slightly annoying commentary is going to be back. Okay. Hello, Hendrik. What is the best? Hobie 15 or Vanacra 15? That is kind of like comparing, um, what would it be like comparing? Uh, cheese, a cheese um, to uh, a house brick if you're looking to have dinner. But actually that's not a very good analogy at all. Um, the Hobie 15 is a training boat, good for families, good as a first catamaran. The Nacra 15 is an absolute race weapon. Those are the differences. So there's no best, there's only different, but of course the Nacra 15 would appear best because it is so much quicker, lighter, more refined and sexier. All right, there we go. Okay, DV and SV. Hi, Joseph. Your next upload is sailing on a Dart 18. Agreed. I'd love to, but unfortunately I haven't got a Dart 18 here, which makes that quite a challenge. All right. All right, thanks, guys. Thanks, Rodrigo. Thanks, Robin. Thanks, Lucas. Yes, James, we'll get some tape on those shoes. Luca, what's the best boat you got? Ah, you should have been here earlier. We went through this. There it is. Bad Boy 94. Um, Hendrik. Yes, I know I've sailed both. Ah, nice one. Luca, love your work. Thanks. But the Hobie is just relaxed. Nacra is an absolute beast. And on that bombshell, but the Nacra is an absolute beast. I think we're going to wind that up there. So thanks very much for your questions. And uh, don't forget to hit the video uh, with a like right now. That speed overlay. Yeah, cheers. I will. Um, Catamavan. Thank you very much too. Thanks, James. Thanks, everyone. And thanks to Harry for waiting all this time. Have you got any questions, Harry? No questions from Harry. Okay, so I'll see you next week for more Q and A. Okay, thanks. Um, yeah, back next Wednesday, 5.30 Greek time for more Q and A from the Wild Wind Boat Park. Thanks for getting involved. And don't forget to hit the like button.